Hello, hello. This is uh, Ole Damagod from uh, an undisclosed location, as they normally say. I'm actually in the south of Spain. I have maybe what I believe is the most important video I ever made um, to share with you. It is, I think most of you or many of you have maybe seen the three incredible videos that uh, David Icke have done lately. And I think uh, absolutely amazing, I applaud him. There is, however, one major big uh, piece of the puzzle missing, I believe, and uh, I've uh, spoken about this in many different interviews, but uh, to reach the big uh, crowds, the masses, not so easy. So I've done my best with the videos, uh, interviews in, in multiple uh, programs around the world, but still I would like to share it here uh, before this type of information will be shut down. As you know, YouTube is very brutal. Uh, Google is censoring and lowering the uh, number of hits when you do searches and uh, like my YouTube channel totally shut down. And Facebook as well. Now I heard that uh, David's, uh, David Icke's uh, Facebook page yesterday with 1.5 million view um, subscribers, something like that, was shut down as well. So I'm feeling uneasy to say the least uh, to go here live on Facebook at the same time I believe uh, this is the way forward we need to be courageous we need to stand in our truths and not just accept what is going down at the moment because this is just a sinister and evil I would say so if anyone once you hear my full story here feels that this is of any interest I would suggest and ask please suggest me as a guest on London Real because that is one of the few uncompromised platforms at the moment. And I'll be happy to take the step forward uh, with whatever risk that uh, involves to share this thing uh, on London Real as well, because then I know that it will get out there. So I will take you on a ride back and this whole thing uh, we'll make a big white circle until I come back to the current situation. So please bear with me, okay? It all started uh, in October last year. And on, I think it was the 19th or 20th of October, I was doing a tour in Sweden, a very intense tour, where one of the things that I was exposing big time was the alleged truck attack in Stockholm 2017 in April there. And while doing this tour together with my incredible tour organizer, um, Johnny Cash, we had all kinds of threats and weird things happening. Like I was doing one talk and one guy in the audience came up and said, are you aware that the uh, radiation around you, the EMF radiation and so on, was a th up to a thousand times stronger than it should have been in normal circumstances where I was standing on stage. I was a bit dizzy and confused at the moment. So, well, that makes sense. Another day we were out uh, and the RV we were driving around in when we came out after one of the presentations in the middle of the night, the whole RV smelled of uh, marijuana big time. And uh, we had to tear the whole thing apart to see if somebody had stashed some in there to, to set us up. But I believe that there are some air holes in the floor that maybe somebody had pumped in uh, the air that way. Anyway, we filmed it in the middle of the night saying if we are being stopped and suddenly they, they charge us for having a big uh, amounts of marijuana, this is a proof that we're being set up. Uh, one of the hosts had a subtle death threat and there were all kinds of weird things happening. Uh, also, we had to relocate a couple of times because they, the uh, facilities were shut down before we got there. So apparently we are a threat to someone, or I would say that the truth is a threat to someone. And uh, well, while doing this, I was uh, uh, being given a video by an individual. I'm, I'm not really sure who it was that found this video, but it shows a man that is the uh, chief coordinating officer of something called Samverken in Stockholm, which is a coordinating organ in Stockholm, uh, there to organize um, the different authorities in a case of emergencies, like disasters. And uh, this man is sort of the, the spider in the web between the fire brigade, the ambulance services, the police, the military, the secret police, government, and so on. 
His name is Ola Slettenmark, and I'd never heard of him before. But some months after this alleged truck attack, which I have done my absolute utmost to expose uh, for what it really was, which was a total inside job, you can see on my website, lightonconspiracies.com, there's in the topic menu, there's uh, one topic called Ola's Censored Videos, and there's an eight-part uh, uh, presentation where I go through the whole thing step by step by step, hopefully showing you that beyond any doubt that this was a total uh, staged event. Not easy to say, I tell you that, because when you, when you present things like that, they will hammer you. And normal people as well would be like, how can you say something like that? That is absurd. How can you say that uh, these victims uh, were not actually killed and so on? I tell you, it's not because I enjoy it. It's very hard and difficult to step forward and present things like this. But the truth is still the truth. And I will do everything I can to expose it in whatever form and shape it takes. So this video I'm going to show you now is a like a TED talk presentation some months after this alleged drug attack. And we have this very same Ola Slettenmark walking around doing a very professional pre pre presentation. The name of his presentation is The Drill That Became Reality. And in it, what he's talking about is what happened on that exact date when this whole thing happened. And among other things, what he's saying is that at 2.52 p.m., that's 14.52 in European uh, way of, of showing times, he sent out an email, a, a mass email to all the key people in the different authorities raising the terror threat level one minute before the actual attack happened, which was 2.53 or 14.53. He, and he then continues explaining the whole thing that they continued doing in great details, very proud, showing slides and everything about how they spent the first hour after this alleged attack. At this point, the driver had not been caught. It could have been a normal accident. It could have been a truck driver with a heart attack, a electric seizure, whatever. It could have been anything else than a terror attack. But here, right away, the terror threat level was out there. It was labeled a terror threat. And they started doing everything they could to shut the whole thing down. They shut down the subway, the train stations. They put people behind lock in all the shops. They emptied the street, locked everybody down. The defense of uh, the Minister of Def uh, Defense was shut down. Certain parts of the government were shut down. Turns out that uh, most of the police that normally works in, at the Normans Police District, which is central Stockholm, the key uh, district when it comes to police activities in Sweden, as far as I've been informed by insiders, everybody was doing something else that day. So the people running around in police officers' uniforms, not the police that should normally be there. And in my presentation, I'm showing you that more or less all of them were not the real thing. So let me show you this presentation if I can make it work. So please bear with me. Boom, share. Here we go. And then you can see and hear for yourself.
på förutsättningen för den här händelsen så finns det ett antal dimensioner. So, well, you heard it for yourself. One minute before the alleged terror attack happened, he sent out this email. How, oh, how, oh, how is that possible if you're not involved? You cannot, meaning that he is a total insider on this job. And this is also what I've been proving, showing multiple times, that once you start seeing the involvement, how the whole setup was done, all of it, very cleverly done you have to take a, you have to sort of salute them because they did an incredible job doing it but still staged event and meaning if he exposes this like this that means that the whole everything that has followed in the wake of this event is fake is fake including the eyewitnesses and so on once again not easy to say not easy to point accusing fingers like this as at Mr. Slett and Mike, I'm not comfortable doing these things, yet it has to be done. And if you want to see what a real terrorist looks like, Mr. Slett and Mike is one of them. Not on a top level, absolutely not. He's working on a lower level, more on a street level, but absolutely an active actor in the whole scenario. So this made me check out dear Mr. Slett and Mike, uh, and I was sent his Twitter account by a friend in Kalmar, Annika, and she sent me some of this tweet from this small Twitter account where he only had like a couple of hundred followers. But when I started checking out these contacts, most of them were involved in similar activities like military intelligence and, and so on. So I started looking into it, meaning once again, that I do not believe that this type of information was meant for the masses, absolutely not. But in among these tweets, there were tweets saying things like, really worried me because one of the things was I could see that he had been traveling around to some of the same places where alleged terror attacks had happened and I've exposed most of them. So uh, in one of them also he says we just celebrated our 500th meeting that's 500 that is a lot of meetings especially if you're only uh, you know like uh, you're working only locally in Stockholm but with security 500 meeting in just a year or two so also he says that um, he was now in Barcelona and he, it was, uh, he was at Las Ramblas where there was a very similar, not truck attack, but uh, van attack that happened uh, almost at the same time as the one in Stockholm. And he said, it's very emotional being back here and so on. And I think being emotional to be back there, was that because he lost someone or, or is it possible he was there because possibly he had been involved in that operation as well. And this is one of the things that I've been pointing out for years and years, what I call the global tour of terror, that we're looking at like a theater group on tour, traveling around among NATO countries or countries that are connected to the Five Eyes, Nine Eyes or 14 Eyes secret spy license, where they carry out the same show. So what we're seeing is like a rock or a theater group on tour, the same performance over and over and over again, and with the same people. So these, this tour, global tour of terror are, as far as I know, being transported around in big military planes like C-130s, C-137s, and then they land and take off from uh, Air Force bases, NATO Air Force bases, or U.S. Air Force bases. They come in after dark, so it's not uh, seen by the public, and also sometimes at small airstrips where there are no flight towers, meaning they would not be registered. Then they're transported in and buses to location where a drill is taking place always the drill is always there the drill or simulation is always there right before so that they can rehearse they can get everything is uh, set up the way they want it and then boom they go live we're going to come back to a simulation in this whole thing anyway among these tweets i found one tweet that was just the day before and he said that now we have decided on 39 locations with a duration of 36 hours. It will happen in five different cities in these NATO countries. And the way I've been learning over all of these, I've, I've been doing this for almost 40 years. When they say, when insiders talk like that, it's like you have to listen because what are they saying? You know, it's just like if you overhear a phone call with a drug dealer and he starts talking about veggies, well, you know that he's not talking about cucumbers or salad, he's talking about marijuana or something else. And here, 
the way this was worded, I just felt, whoa, what is going on? So what he was talking about in this tweet, what they now, they now decided and, and locked the position of 39 drills or um, exercises in with the duration of 36 hours. And the locations were Greater Manchester and London, United Kingdom. And the thing was, it was going to go down on October 23 and 24, which was like two days later, 48 hours later than when I saw this tweet. So it was Greater Manchester and London. Both of these have been hit by multiple alleged terror attacks. I exposed most of them. And uh, this was exactly at the time when the Brexit referendum was, when England was trying to get out of the European Union, which has happened since then. But it was at a very crucial point for the European Union, which is part of the New World Order agenda, if you're not aware of that. NATO, United Nations, uh, the European Union, the Wealth Organization in, in directly and so on, they're all connected to the same octopus. And also they do not want, if one leaves, that might encourage other members to leave and then the whole thing can fall apart. So they are really trying just like the mob, you know, uh, management by fear, force people back in instead of giving them the liberty to do free choices. So here we have England almost on the way verge to, to step out of the European Union. So if we look at this, like 39 coordinated attacks, possible alleged terror attacks instead, that would have sorted out the problem in England with the Brexit, because then if you had a, a whole string of alleged terror attacks happening, then you could just say, well, for your security, very sorry, we just have to shut down exactly the way they've done now with this alleged virus, shut everything down, you're not allowed to go outside, you're not allowed to meet in big groups, you're not allowed to demonstrate, you're not allowed, and by the way, we'll just censor the internet as well, because that is where the alleged terrorists have been communicating, so bye-bye Facebook, Snapchat, uh, Twitter, all of these things, and while we're at it, a, uh, a censored version of, of uh, the internet would then be presented. I'm speculating now, but this is what a wet dream of the New World Order. They've been trying this for years and years, and this would be a golden opportunity for this. So that's, that's England for you, Manchester and London. Then the next city in his tweet he talked about was Paris, France. That was exactly the city where they have the most problem with the Yellow Vest movement. Exactly the same solution there. Boom, 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 boom. We have to shut everything down because of uh, your security, and no, you are not allowed to demonstrate, you're not allowed to do anything, all in the name of security. So that would sort that one out. The next one he was talking about was Barcelona, Spain, which is the, uh, the place that have a major problem for Spain, because Catalonia is trying to free itself from Spain, and thus out of the European Union as well. So same solution to a similar problem. So England, France, Spain, all of that would have been solved in one go. Then you had Sweden, where there were two drills planned. It was called Operation Sea Eagle. And the two drills were two power plants. One of them, a water plant up in the north of Sweden, Elf Kolbe. And then you had Forsmark, which is a nuclear power plant, where they were going to have a drill. And according to what I've been able to find out, there should be 1,600 people involved in that drill or in all of the drills together, because I believe possibly Operation Sea Eagle was the name for this whole, whole operation. And then the final destination they were talking about was Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And I didn't understand why Rotterdam, why Rotterdam of all cities. And then I was contacted by a naval officer who explained to me that Rotterdam is actually the point of exit entry when it comes to food import into Europe. If you knock out the, uh, the port of, of Rotterdam, you can create famine in Europe within weeks. So if you want to create chaos, if that is the point of this whole thing, I mean, we're looking at someone who was directly involved in the alleged terror, uh, truck attack in Stockholm, which has co caused a lot of chaos and uh, created a, not a lot of new laws and cameras and surveillance and anti-terror this and anti-terror that, all based on lies. So if we're looking at this, we would, if I was correct, be looking at like a massive, the size of 9-11, but in Europe, but with consequences hitting the whole world. So I was like, oh my 
God, what the hell is this? I tell you, I felt sick to my stomach. I, did, I really was like, what are we going to do? But at the same time, we had 48 hours because it was said to go live on October the 23rd. So at that point, with this divine synchronicity that uh, occurs sometimes, Mikkel O'Donnell from Wake Up Globe and his beautiful partner, uh, Joanne, was visiting me and Johnny Cash where we were on a uh, location during doing this tour and he had his camera with him so I said Michael boom are you in we need to we need to blow the whistle here be, before something happens we need to do everything we can and Bray Michael without hesitation said for sure let's do it so we found the kitchen put on the lights uh, turn off the fan and camera on and then boom we recorded one version, one warning in Swedish, one in English. And then from, I think it was 4 p.m. until 4 a.m. the next morning, I sat and contacted so many different radio stations around the world, making short interviews, just saying, please, please be aware. I don't know if this is going to happen or not, but this is what I fear. I described the situation. I said, look over there. Look, 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 look. And then... Uh, during the night, we had incredible people as well that was helping us sharing it, like Ronnie M. And uh, um, I'm sorry if I get forget people, Annika and Kalmar, other people like that were just sharing, 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 sharing. So within four, 24 uh, to 48 hours, I started checking the number of views of this warning, and we were up to several hundred thousand. So October the 23rd came, and more or less nothing happened. So I was like, okay, maybe I was totally wrong or, but whatever. If I look like an idiot, I can live with that. Not a problem. The main thing is that I did my best and nobody got hurt. So the 23rd uh, was uh, passing. And uh, in the afternoon of the 23rd, I was contacted by freelance journalists in Brussels, Belgium. That is the sort of the almost like the capital of Europe and it's also the the place where the NATO has its headquarters NATO which is if you're not aware of it it's the tool of terror for the new world order it is a horrible horrible brutal institution that are carrying out unjust wars around the world and the new world order wet dream is to combine the United Nations troops the NATO troops and the American uh, military into one world army there to control us, not to protect us. So this whole mayhem scenario would have been the perfect excuse to uh, put together these three forces and for our protection once again, of course. So this freelance journalist contacted me and said, you know, I've been working here for some years. I have good intel from military sources and so on. And we've been feeling lately that something is building up. And we, we haven't something major, but we haven't been able to, to find out what. And then we heard your warning and suddenly everything fell into place. And he said, are you aware of what's going on right now? I said, I have absolutely no idea. He said, NATO has just called for a crisis, an urgent crisis meeting where all the ministers of defense in Europe has been called into this meeting. And right now there's absolute mayhem at this meeting there's chaos and so on and he said it's all because of your warning his words not mine so i thought in my world good news good news good news because finally maybe we managed to put an iron rod into the gearbox of this death machine then the next day came we're still within this this uh, range of 36 hours the duration of 36 hours from the 24th 23rd to the morning of the 20 or the day of October 25th. On the 24th, I believe it was, there was an article in a very highly respected website called VoltaireNet.org. And the article was NATO near implosion. The NATO was falling apart. And I thought, this is amazing, absolutely amazing. Maybe we've finally fi uh, managed to break the, the back of the beast, you know, once and for all. And then at the very same time, all Israeli, that's an interesting country and when it comes to these type of things, all the Israeli embassies globally were shut down due to a general strike, they say, because they wanted officially some better wages. Really? Are, are you telling me 
that the staff of Israeli embassies managed to, on a global scale, managed to organize a global shutdown of all the embassies. Would the embassy shut down just because there's a strike or would it officially be open, but the employees would be striking? So I thought that was interesting as well. And then at the very same time, the vice, uh, vice president of the United States, Mike Pence, and the US uh, Secretary of Defense was called back urgently to Washington. I don't know, was it because of this or not? I don't know, it was just happening at the same time. And then Donald, dear Donald Trump, went out and said, we've got some great news. We've killed uh, the ISIS leader, al-Baghdadi. Incredible. A slight little problem here though, Donald, if you, if you haven't noticed, this is the fourth time you officially declared him dead. So what was all of that about? Uh, at that level, I have no idea what's going on, you know, because there's so much smoke and mirrors and multi-layered operations. I don't know, absolutely not. I'm just pointing out these things happened. And then the following morning on the October 25th, um, Jens Stoltenberg, the chief of NATO, who was, I would say, deeply involved in the um, blowing up of the government building in Oslo, as well as the mass shooting on Utøya. I mean, he was not part of the shooters, but he was definitely, in my world, part of um, that operation. And he was rewarded with this post as chief of NATO. You can see my presentation, um, when terror struck Norway, I just take it apart step by step. It's one of the few that they leave alone for some reason, I don't know. Otherwise, as soon as I mention my name, boom, and false flag, I'm shot down. So it's interesting to see that I'm still alive here. At least I hope I am. Anyway, so Jens Stoltenberg on October the 25th had a, a short uh, press conference uh, just to say hello to the press. And the way he, he opened it was like, hello, 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 we want to. I don't know, maybe he had a bad voice day, but uh, it, to me, it looked like he was terrified, which would make sense if everything was falling apart here. So why am I telling you these things? I'm telling you this because this happened on October 23 and October 24. And the 24th of October is actually the day of the United Nation as well. So had some of these attacks been aimed at the United Nations, for instance, the headquarters, then that would, um, that would justify military retaliation. That's the whole key thing in the whole military retaliation. That's why the Pentagon was hit as well in that uh, inside job 9-11 there. Had it not been for Pentagon, it had been civilian targets and it would not have justified military intervention and starting the whole epic war on terror. So here we once again had a military target, possible at least, it was the exact date. What are the chances? There are 365 days a year. So could be a coincidence, I would say, really? But once again, what has that to do with today? Well, this, when I discovered that, or was divinely guided, I don't know, I mean, had anyone else than this uh, geek here, I'm, I'm a, like a rain man in this area, seen this uh, twi uh, Twitter tweet, I mean, it would have just passed by them. But for some reason, boom, I, I just like, whoa. So let's suggest, let's suggest that I was correct and that this whole thing stopped a massive, massive, massive operation thanks to incredible radio hosts all over the world, like Jason Liasatos, who works for David Hyde. He jumped on a bicycle in the middle of the night. I think it was even raining. And I think I did an in, he did an interview with me like at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. in the morning. Fantastic. He didn't know. He didn't know if it was true, but he trusted in me because we've been doing many things over the years. Incredible people like uh, Mac Files in the U.S., Jim Fetzer. I mean, there were so many of them. And also all of these uh, of you who were so fantastic in sharing this information because that is our weapon against them, the truth spread it, spread it, spread it, and shine the light at these dark forces right in the belly of the beast. That's also why my website is called Light on Conspiracies. Put the light of truth right in there. And it's that in that way, we can transcend and stop this madness. Because like all criminals, they can only function in the dark. It's only in the shadow. As soon as we say, we see you, we see what you're up to, they can't do it. Anyway, 
October 23, 24. What happened on October 18th? That's just five days before. There was a big virus simulation in New York. It was called the event 201. People say 201, but actually if you look at the logo, it's event two and then there's a globe and a one. It's, an, it's actually event 21. The globe is just in the middle to confuse there. It's event 21 connected to agenda 21, which is the new world order once again, or agenda 2030. If you don't know what the new world order is up to, check it out. You just have to study agenda 21 or agenda 2030. Absolute nightmare, nightmare on steroids. It's 1981 times 100. It's bizarre what they want, what they're planning for us. So at this simulation, we had the World Health Organization. No, that's not true. The World Economic Forum, which is the 1%. It is the elite of the elite of the elite. They meet once a year in Davos, Switzerland. And last time they were there, I mean, it's just a tiny little place, 11,000 inhabitants, I believe. But there was 1,500 private jets there. I mean, what, that shows you the level of finance uh, power in this group. And it's not censored. Anyone, I believe, can go there, but only one slight problem. The ticket, entry ticket is the minimum, as far as I've been informed, is $100,000. So that sort of counts most of us out. So they can do whatever they want. And if you look at the World Economic Forum's uh, presentations, beautifully done, it's super professional and absolute super scary. We are talking about the New World Order again, where they are at a point and the, the plan is to destroy everything, everything, everything. And out of that, out of the ruins, create what they called the fourth industrial revolution. And that is AI in combination with smart grid cities, smart cities, everything smart, digital, and connected to 5G, but in a massive network, super, super scary, including these super dangerous vaccines. There was a lot of super going on here, super, super, super. But I tell you, oh my God, when you start looking into these things. So it was a World Economic Forum. Then we had Johns Hopkins Hospital, or the Johns Hopkins uh, uh, University. They are, by the way, the ones that have delivered the map that we've seen on mainstream media everywhere with the million, millions of deaths everywhere. You know, 48,000 there, 42,000, 43, and so on. So I ask you, why or why or why are mainstream media using a map from an hosp a hospital? It doesn't make any sense. It should be like from some kind of like uh, the World Health Organization. That would make sense. But no, 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 it's there. You can see up in the left corner, that's the logo of it. Why are they using that? Well, in the exact same simulation, like they were carrying, playing out here, was the exact, I'm saying the exact scenario that we are seeing now in the world from January the 1st. Once again, interesting date that this whole thing started with the alleged Corona one. January the 1st, there are 365 days. January the 1st, boom, that's when it started. And so there was also another uh, institution that funded this simulation, and that was Bill and Melinda Gates. And Bill and Melinda Gates, you will find everywhere. Their fingerprints are everywhere, everywhere, everywhere around this global pandemic, plandemic, whatever you want to call it. Listen to David Icke and listen to Dr. Rashid Buttar, listen to many, many people filming empty hospitals, listen to so many different people that know what they're talking about. It is not what we're being told, that I can guarantee you. The official story, 100% absolute lies. So we have Bill and Melinda Gates there, the World Economic Forum and Johns Hopkins Hospital. And by the way, that that map, I did an interview together with um, Jason Goodman on our uh, weekly show, lightonconspiracies.com. You can find it on patreon.com forward slash lightonconspiracies, where we interviewed a man called James, uh, John Collin. And John Collin was actually the inventor of this exact map back uh, before the year 2000. I think it was in the, in the late 80s, where he was one of the first that combined statistics with maps with visuals 
So instead of just a long line of boring numbers, you suddenly had a visual uh, thing that could make such a great uh, tool for marketing or intelligence agencies and so on. John Collin later, started, he was one of the first people that worked for Oracle in Silicon Valley. And their very first uh, uh, client and the biggest client, as far as I know, is the CIA. Go figure. Anyway, John Collin had a look at this map some months, uh, some, yeah, I think it's a couple of months ago. And just like, whoa, that's my map. What the hell is going on? How did they get, how, why are they using that? He said the coloring is all wrong because normally you should have green, yellow, and red, where green is areas that are okay, yellow is where uh, the risk zone, and um, red is danger zones. But on these maps, you got red everywhere. If there's one victim, you got a red dot there. He said that that's just wrong. And he started checking down, checking out the numbers. He downloaded the official numbers from CDC in Atlanta, Georgia, the Center for Disease Control. I call it the Center for Disease Creation. When you look in that background, when it comes to Ebola, swine flu, SARS, MARS, Zika, oh my God, they are often the owners of the patents. They're the ones pumping out the numbers and they're major in guiding these massive psychological operations that are then totally connected with the vaccine industry that where it's like a swinging door, they just move between these uh, entities. And uh, so he compared the numbers from the CDC and this map did not match up at all, at all, at all, not at all. So it was like, and also the logic behind this disease, there's no logic at all. It, the whole thing is not true. So please listen to people that really knows what they're talking about when it comes to health, like Dr. Rashid Bhutan. I really recommend him, very brave individual, fantastic. He's been on London Real as well. So if you find this important, what I'm talking about, please recommend me as a guest on London Real. I will step forward. I will present this whole thing because I believe that would help to make a more complete picture. Because I think that what happened at this crisis meeting in Brussels on the 23rd, they were sweating. They were because the whole thing had been busted open. This thing that was going to go down in total secrecy was suddenly visible to hundreds of thousands of people just waiting, saying, if you pull that trigger, we know it's you. So they couldn't do it. So what were they going to do? And I think that they decided to regroup, to stay low for a month and a half. I think it was about six weeks and then go live, but only with the virus, only with the virus. So I believe that what we're seeing now is a very soft version of what had been, been prepared for us a very, very soft version, if you can compare it. And all the strange details with empty hospitals, with all of these things that doesn't match up, it's because the, the other 50 or 60% of the plan is not there. That would have made a full picture of absolute mayhem. That was the idea. When you look at the simulation in New York, uh, the pandemic uh, simulation, October 18th, that five days before this whole thing happened. It is identical to what is going down. It's presented. You can go, you can find it on YouTube or, or the internet, event 201. Uh, you will see that there's simulation highlights, uh, reels, so you can hear the uh, discussions. And the only difference that it's the same virus. They've got the presentation of the virus with the symptoms, how it spread, how it in the end killed 65 million people and so on. But the only difference is that the epicenter was in South America, not China. But when you look at the, the players, they call them, there were 15 players that, that, that day there from the CDC, from intelligence agencies, from the Marriott Hotel, Marriott Hotel, which is the host of multiple Bilderberg meeting. Uh, there was none, no South American participants at all, but there was one Chinese uh, professor in bio, chemistry, bio, all of this. I mean, there, his name is Professor Gao, I think. So that was on the 18th of October. The very same day as this happened, the simulation, there was the World Military Games in Wuhan of all cities in China, the exact spot where this alleged uh, epidemic started. 
So in Wuhan that day, there were some 10,000 soldiers from more than 100 different United Nation nations. That's 10,000 soldiers in that exact city where this virus is said to have spread. Was that a coincidence? When you look at the, this is like the, the Olympic Games for military staff, global military staff uh, connected to United Nation. And when you look at some of the sponsors, you will see some of the sponsors have had very weird connections to the Clinton Foundation, among others. It's also a foundation that was started in 1947. This whole military, uh, these games were started, in, I believe, in 1947, the exact same years as a lot of these other operatives started when in, it was connected with Operation Paperclip, where they exported um, very, very uh, skilled um, experts in many different uh, areas from Nazi Germany, anything from intelligence to bioweapons to rocket science, and started institutions like NASA with Werner von Braun. The OSS went into the CIA, where some of the people they used there was uh, Reinhard Gehlen, who was later the one that built up the whole Gladio network, which is super, super central in so many of these alleged terror attacks nowadays. And then you had the CDC, same time when they started, and that's where all the numbers and the diseases come from. And then you have, <clears throat> like I said, these World Military Games was also created at the very same time. So we have very similar that these, they've been created at the same time, and then they just started going parallel and being used whenever it's needed. So I'm speculating now, just imagine if the real date of attacks were October the 23rd and October the 24th, not the 1st of January. Just imagine if this has happened at the very same day, the duration of 36 hours, 39 coordinated attacks in Europe, including the blowing up of the port of Rotterdam in Holland, stopping food import, creating famine, including a nuclear power plant disaster in Sweden, at least an alleged one saying that you can't see radioactivity so you can force people indoors just saying it's out there and people would freak out. Imagine if all of that had happened and at the same time this virus thing started in Wuhan, China. And Wuhan is just not, it not, not just any city, it is the city that is the most famous for being rebellious in China. It's also the city with a lot of bad air. And it's also the city where the, I think it was the world's first rollout of 5G with more than 10,000 base stations were, roll, were rolled out in February, 2019. So what was the idea with the military there? Were they there to help with the situation or possibly when you look at how militaries have been used in other areas when it comes to uh, like the Spanish flu, which has nothing to do with Spain. These were American soldiers injected with this crap, and then they went out and brought this disease with them, spreading it and causing absolute mass deaths. We have other uh, examples where the native Indian died of smallpox. Where did the smallpox come from? Well, they were given blankets infected with the virus, with this disease. You know, this is the demonic way of thinking behind this whole thing. So I ask you, is it possible that you had 10,000 soldiers there in Wuhan, then we have 39 coordinators like boom, 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 boom. I'm not even up to 39 yet. Attacks happening in Europe and other countries. So would the reaction be that, oh my God, we need to send the troops back home to help them and thus indirectly bringing the virus with them. So that would be then later saying, oh my God, it was the soldiers brought this virus with them home to all of these different countries and this has created this mayhem. Was that the thought? I, knowing or having a good understanding of how these individuals work or how these dark forces work, I think that is spot on. I believe that that was the idea. And then we had all of that, what we see here now with the lockdowns, with the quarantine, 
with uh, all of these brutal 1984 type of uh, laws uh, stepping into place with mandatory vaccine. Did you know that the act of uh, uh, the health act uh, for these type of diseases, the English one that went through, the number of it is 1984. I mean, can you believe it right in our face? So I ask you once again, if you think this information is important and crucial to get out there in a much, much bigger way than this little thing on Facebook, please contact um, LondonReal.tv and make it available for the masses. Because I believe that so many other pieces will fall into place once people start seeing this and people on the inside that are totally compartmentalized in their operations and not understanding the bigger picture, they will suddenly see, oh my God, that's why this and this and this and this, and suddenly we'll have a much more complete picture. Well, if you're still here, I thank you very much for listening. Uh, I hope you understand that this is not a comfortable place for me to be in. I have no protection whatsoever. And I'm standing up. If what I'm saying is true, then very brutal forces. I point out people by name and so on. Not comfortable. But the information, the truth needs to get out there. And it is the truth that will set us free. Like I said many years ago, I applaud him, by the way. Fantastic what he's done over all of these years. So with that in mind, what to do? one step at a time, and please notice, it's only through fear that they can control us. Fear, I'm afraid at the moment, I'm s smelling a little bit, but bo among... And I think I've been shut down, I'm not sure. Anyway, let's do our best, let's use our cre uh, creativity, and uh, I don't know if I'm back, I think so. And then spread it, spread it, spread it. The more of us that are aware of these things, the better. And stay away from the vaccine. I ask you, I beg you, I beg you. The more you start looking into what's in these things, it's diabolic. It really is. It's, it's beyond description. And there's no way back. Once it's in your system, your body has all of these uh, layers to protect itself. But once you use the needle, you bypass all these different walls of protections and it's in your system. And these viruses that are not alive, but they do replicate. And according to experts, it's, it's I don't even want to go there. It's so awful what they, what they do inside you. So please at least inform yourself before you even dis consider letting your children or your loved ones or yourself being injected because it is very, very serious. If anyone comes near my family with one of these injection needles, I will treat it as if he had a machine gun or a machete. I would fight for my life and their life to avoid the prick of that tiny little thing. And uh, if you look into the background of individuals like Bill Gates, I don't know if you've been impressed by him, it looks very nice, it always does, but oh my God, oh my God, look at all the thousands and thousands and thousands of cases where he and his foundation is being sued for causing mass death and, and damages to so many, 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 many people around the world with these vaccines that have not been tested properly. And one, it's not only a matter of being tested, check out what is in them it's like whew, there's all of these things that are so bad for us and that if you got it in you in any other way and form than through a doctor with a white coat you would you would just, you know you would get that person in prison because it's just absolute demonic and and criminal so i ask you and i i ask directly to nurses and doctors and uh, police and military you are key in this whole operation and i know that the funding very often comes through and the ed education as well funded by the rockefeller foundation or the bill and melinda gates foundation and so on. it's all the time the money 
and they got you by the balls, I know, but only financially. You have the choice to be a free individual, speak out freely, because this is the time to do that. It's not a time for wusses. We need to stand up now because otherwise it's end game over and done. Goodbye, cruel world. Here we go down the drain. So I ask you, I really, really ask you, let be empowered enough to make a beautiful difference for humanity. That is what I ask of you. Thank you so much for listening. And once again, if you feel that this is important, please contact londonreal.tv, Brian Rose, I think his name is, not because I want to get on it. I mean, I don't know what is going to cause me and my family to do that. But at the same time, that is one of the few platforms now that are not shut down or censored, as far as I know. The rest of them are. I mean, we're ducking and diving everywhere because it's like being boom, 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 boom shut down right left and center so please do that if you feel appropriate and i will do my part and stand up and say exactly what i've been saying this time but uh, to a bigger audience i i just want to say bless us all we're all in the same boat may it sink or may it keep floating towards a beautiful new future the choice is ours the choice is ours and there is no time to sit and play with your belly button anymore. Those days are over. This is the time for decision, for courage, to stand in truth. And what the truth is, you, you know in your heart. You know what the truth is in your heart. Your mind will be confused and fear will be pushed in there to discourage you. But I say bravery, bravery, bravery. And uh, life rewards courage. I can tell you that. It comes in unknown forms, but in a beautiful way. So be brave, be strong, be truthful, be righteous, and be beautiful the way you're supposed to be. With that said, thank you ever so much for taking the time to listen to me. Bless us all.